Hello, how's it going? Just so that this video isn't completely empty, um, there's not going to be a lot of content in this, it's just going to be an overview, but if you're really keen to get started, there's a number of packages you can look at, start reading the documentation, get a little familiar with them, and start to think about how we could use them together. The first one is multiprocessing. This is a Python as in it's part of the Python standard library uh, package. It essentially bypasses the global, uh, what is it called? The global interpreter lock, the GIL, which means that we can actually get true multiprocessing working in Python. So I would strongly recommend to have a look at the documentation for that. We'll be using that. We'll also be using NumPy. Hopefully that's familiar already and number. Number is a just-in-time compiler, works pretty well in um, combination with NumPy, and this is going to let us get nice, fast, high-performance code. So anytime we start doing loops or things in Python, we need to find a way to break that out into a just-in-time compiled function. Okay, so with that out of the way, I mean, these are the three things, yeah, chapter one of our journey right now, these are the three things you can look at to start getting familiar with uh, what we're doing. So, um, I'm still fairly busy, but work is starting to die down a little bit, starting to get a little more spare time, and the, the wheels are turning in my head. I've always had this dream um, specifically this year, I started having this dream of making a perfect or a pretty good engine, game engine, in Python and C++, I guess. Now, this engine, what it's not going to be, it's not going to be Unreal. It's not going to be Unity. Those things already exist. It's not going to be a nice, like this has a GUI, you click a button, it does this, it's drag and drop. Nah, none of that. This is going to be, well, let me put an analogy. Okay, so Unity, you can pretty much do whatever you want. It's very easy to use, very general purpose. That's like a Toyota Camry, okay? I had a Toyota Camry, it was pretty good, then it crashed. Um, I'm going to make a race car, and what I mean by a race car is I'm going to make a highly specific system with potentially, which is potentially a little less robust, but more high performance. Now, you don't take a race car and drive it around your neighborhood and then complain when it can't go up hills, right? Um, so, that analogy just completely derailed. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a collection of libraries which can be adapted to make certain games. For this test, I'm going to make pool or snooker. You know, you have a board... You have a bunch of balls, whatever. Then you have a main ball. You hit the ball, collide with the balls, and there'll also be little traps. And when the balls go into the traps, they disappear and you get points and things. Depending on how things go, I'll probably include this. I'll also have a little target where you can pick where specifically on the ball you want to hit. And I'm going to try to make this as reasonably high performance as possible. So I'm going to try to integrate high performance code with well-written, extendable, semantic code, if that makes sense. Side note, I've been doing a fair amount of Python tutoring this year, and I've been working with both computer science, traditional computer science students, and engineering students, and I found that there's sort of two different ways that these um, disciplines write code. I find that the engineering students tend to write more scientific, uh, more performant code, and the computer science students tend to write more semantic, like, you know, classes, object-oriented sort of code. And there are benefits to each. The high performance code is high performance and the semantic code is easier to understand and extend and everything. And there are drawbacks. So 
the end goal of high performance engineering code is like assembly language. Let's just write everything in assembly language. Very hard to jump into an assembly, assembly language code base and extend it. On the other hand, the um, computer science students write this beautiful, elegant code, which uh, makes intellectual sense. And then it's very difficult to, um, well, there are little bits of performance that you trade away you know, trade off along the way, as I have done in the past. And I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to integrate the benefits of both into this system. So I've rambled enough. Here is uh, here's how this is going to work. So first of all, this is going to be multi-threaded. That's where the uh, the Python multi-threading is going to go, and we'll have a main thread and a side thread. And in the main thread, we're going to have basically our app and our renderer. And the reason both of these are in the main thread is that the windowing library, be it um, SDL or GLFW, whatever, they pretty much work the same way. Um, that windowing library, OpenGL basically can't do context sharing that has to be explicit there's overhead in that it's it's not um it's not very good so in order to be able to in order to be able to um, detect mouse presses and key presses and things i'm gonna have to keep all the opengl stuff in one thread so that's why i'm putting this all in one thread together and then the the model or the scene or whatever we want to call it will be in a side thread and in between them we'll have a sort of um, event queue if I spelt that right. So anytime a key press or a, a time related event occurs that is popped onto the pushed onto the event queue and then that's popped off and processed in the model class. Now both of these uh, yeah, why not? I'll experiment with both options, but theoretically both of these can be going as fast as possible. In practice, we probably just want the main thread to be rendering, um, to be running at 60 frames per second. And we want the side thread to be updating as fast as possible to have the most accurate, oh, to have the most accurate um, collision detections and, and things like that. Now, in addition to this, we'll have a set of number functions, um, a set of little modules of high performance code, which are just in time compiled. And there'll be like a bunch of little things which will send sit separately. And the model will be able to invoke these functions as necessary and get the most performance possible. So that's just a, a brief overview. I know, like I said, there's not a lot in this video. It's just talking through what's going to be happening. Um, but the order I'm going to write these. So the first section is I'm going to be focusing on those high performance functions, just getting those little modules working. Then the second one is I'm going to go outwards. So I'll have basically the yeah, we'll do the model and then the app, then the event queue. So working out a protocol for um, letting these things talk to each other and then the renderer. And that's the brief overview. So yeah, you know, watch this space. This will be the thing that I'll be focusing on for the time being. And then Hopefully this will give me an engine that I can use later on to do other things. Anyway, thank you for sitting through my little talk. Thank you for coming to my TED talk and um, have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.